Continuing on with the molecular partition function, let's look at the components of the energies again to the energy of a given molecule. So if we have our energy epsilon, that's going to be composed of a translational part, the molecule moving back and forth inside of its container in the x, y, and z directions. It's going to be also including rotational energy if, they, if it has at least two atoms, then there'll be some axes to rotate around. And for a general molecule, there will be three axes to rotate around if it's a nonlinear molecule. And again, if you have at least two atoms, there will be vibrational energy, typically for a nonlinear molecule, 3n minus 6 vibrations. And then there will be energy of any electronic levels, any electronic excitations beyond the ground state for a given molecule. Okay, so if we're talking about the probability of our system being in a given state, let's say we label these states, we have indices A, B, C, and D. It's in translational state A, rotational state B, vibrational state C, and electronic state D that would make this energy of A, B, C, D, and there'd be an index probably running from zero to infinity for all of these four indices. So the probability that we lie in a state IJKL, or I'll keep it consistent here, A, B, C, D, since that's how I labeled them, is the probability of being in translational state A times probability of being in rotational state B, times probability of being in vibrational state C, times probability of being in electronic state D. We're assuming that all four of these are independent and that the probabilities of being in these four states are just multiplicative. You just multiply the individual probabilities together. Okay, so if we want to calculate the partition function of this particular system here, function of the volume of the system and temperature, then that's going to be a sum over all four of these indices, A, B, C, D, and sum of their Boltzmann factors, E to the minus beta. Remember, beta is just 1 over Boltzmann constant times temperature. Just easier to write up in these factors here. E to the minus beta epsilon A plus epsilon B plus epsilon C plus epsilon D. So it's the energy of the translational, rotational, vibrational, and electronic parts. Okay, but then because of the way that exponents worked, we can make this e to the minus beta EA times e to the minus beta EB times e to the minus beta EC, etc we can factor out these exponents into separate e's. And also, since these indices don't have any dependence on one another, they're independent indices, we can do the following refactorization of this formula here. We can factorize this as sum over a, the translational part, e to the minus beta ea, times sum over b, e to the minus beta epsilon b for rotational part. You see we're separating out all these indices and just summing them independently here. C for vibrations and D for the electronic part, epsilon d. <clears throat> okay, so this is nice because we can calculate each of these factors individually now. And what this allows us to do is see that this total partition function here Q of VT is equal to a product of four partition functions. Q translational, Q rotational, Q vibrational, and Q electronic. So for our molecular partition function, it is a product of our translational, rotational, vibrational, and electronic partition functions, and we can go about finding each of these four individual pieces by themselves and then taking the uh, result of those four calculations 
multiplying them back together at the end, and we have our desired total partition function Q there. And just to give you an example and kind of uh, do, go ahead and do a spoiler alert for what these are all going to be, for an ideal gas particle, we have that Q trans of VT is what we talked about in the previous video. That's 2 pi m over h squared beta to the 3 halves times volume. And there are going to be many, many, many states occupied above the ground state for the translational part there. And for a monatomic gas, we don't have rotations or vibrations, and the, elect the electronic part's pretty much in the ground state, so that's why we had this for our partition function for a monatomic ideal gas. So taking this times the 1 over n factorial and to the power of n that we talked about in the previous video, and there we are at our result which we use to calculate a few properties in those example videos. For rotational energy, we have that Q rotational of V of T is going to equal product 8 pi squared times moment of inertia over H squared beta. If you want to know what moment of inertia is, look up some of my uh, rigid rotor videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. And then we have vibrational part. That's going to equal e to the minus beta h nu over 2, h nu being Planck's constant times a particular frequency for that vibration. That depends on some factors in the individual chemical bond. And then 1 minus e to the minus beta h nu. And that's the vibrational part. If you want to learn more about this new, then look in the harmonic oscillator part on the quantum chemistry playlist. And then finally, for the electronic states, we're just going to assume that the electronic states typically are all in the ground state. And we're going to assume that generally that's approximately equal to 1. You only exist in the ground state entirely. And you can define that energy to be 0 because all energies are relative. So e to the minus beta 0 is just going to be 1. So our electronic partition function typically is just going to be assumed to be 1 unless we have uh, some strange type of state or we're at very, very high temperatures. Typically, this vibrational partition function is also uh, near the ground state. It's also very near 1 unless you start getting up to very significant temperatures relative to this frequency. Uh, typically, there's a handful of rotational states occupied, and as we said, typically there are many, many, many translational states which are occupied at uh, typical room temperatures.